Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'd like to showcase a CPU I built before my hiatus that I never quite got around to making a video about. So this thing in front of you is about three years old, but it is a 100% complete and functioning 8-bit CPU. And I like to call this the Buzz CPU because it has all the fancy features and functionalities that make advanced redstoners go ooh. Well, except for the fact that it's actually a piece of crap, but, you know, we'll get to that. First, I want to show you what's really cool about this. The most obvious thing you might notice is this thing is tiny for a CPU. Usually when you think of computers and CPUs in Minecraft, you think of these big, sprawling things that take up half the world. But no, this is it right here. Complete, functioning, everything you need in a CPU. Second thing, it is fast. This is an accumulator-based design, so let me show you. This is the accumulator that's written to every cycle from the ALU output. So from the accumulator, there is... Let me see if I can squeeze through here somehow. Did I mention it's compact? <laughs> So from the accumulator, there's one tick, and then that goes directly into the ALU, which is four and a half ticks, so that's five and a half ticks total, and then go back through the accumulator, which is one and a half ticks to write. So seven ticks. This CPU has a seven tick processing cycle, which is absolutely insane. That sort of computing speed is basically unheard of pre-carry cancel actors. So especially in a piston-based design where things are infamously quirky and odd. So this thing is really small and it is really, really fast. Another really cool thing about the CPU is something that's so subtle that if you weren't looking for it, you probably wouldn't even know it's there. This CPU right here is pipelined. And you might say, but well, wait a minute, Benny. Where are all the pipeline registers between the different stages? Where's all, you know, the indications of the pipeline? That's because this is a waterfall pipeline, meaning all of the different components are timed precisely so that they'll send all the signals and receive all the data in sync, no staging, no special fancy pipeline registers or logic needed for that. And that, in my opinion, is really, really cool. It's all in the timing. Yeah, I know, it's a piston-based CPU with a waterfall pipeline. And if you look down here, you'll see this is where the instruction number is sent to instruction memory. And you'll notice, based on the timing, it's designed to be used with prefetch. So the instruction number is a little bit before, or excuse me, a little bit after the instruction, the CPU will actually be executed. And this allows you to do a couple of interesting things. For example, the RAM over here, or the, at least the address for the RAM, this is just the CPU, the RAM is going to be somewhere over there, wherever you would build it. The RAM address it can come in 9 ticks. Even though this is a 7 tick CPU, you can run this at full speed with 9 tick delay RAM and still have no issues at all due to some just some general pipelining sorcery. So I think that is really, really cool. It's a small CPU, it's pretty darn fast, and it's pipelined. So now that I've showed off the basics of the CPU, I want to show off a few of the different components that make this possible. This right here is the program counter in the CPU, and I wish I knew who originally built this, because I'm pretty sure it isn't me, but yeah, it's a really awesome T flip flop based program counter. I can increment here, it counts up one bit at a time, just like you'd expect. And if I hit this, it will jump 
to whatever value I've input down here. You can input, sure, let's input 10. And there you go. No matter what it's at before, now it's jumped to 10. I can continue counting from there. It does this with this nifty bit of XOR logic with the current counter value and the value coming in. And that tells it what which T flip-flops to activate when this is on. See, if I do this, then all these pistons come up indicating which ones should flip to make the, the correct counter value. It's a really cool piece of logic. I wish I knew who built this, but unfortunately, it escapes me right now. This is the ALU that I used. This one is a Benny original design, although I'm sure there are other ALUs that are similar to this out there. And to my knowledge, this is the smallest, full-speed, fully-featured ALU with instant carry that's possible in Minecraft. It is 12 blocks long and 11 blocks high. And two blocks wide per bit. So it's really small. I like it. It's four and a half ticks to go all the way through. So just to show you some example, I have my classic 5-3 input. 5 plus 3 is 8. But as a general purpose arithmetic logic unit, you can do so much more. If I want to do 5 minus 3, invert B, add 1, there you go. 5 minus 3 is 2. If I wanted to, say, just add 1, just for the sake of it, there, that's 9. If I want to do XNOR, there you go, I can invert one of the inputs, and I get XOR instead. Or, of course, I can OR, and just straight up OR is 7, because, well, that's the bits. And I could invert them and do various other logical operations as well. You get the idea. It's small, it's fast, it's fully featured. And I was really, really happy with this thing when I made it. Now, of course, I'm more interested in carry cancel adder AOUs, but uh, that's another story. So, now that you know what those two components are, you can see those are most of the CPU. The AOU is right there in the middle, and that right there is the program counter. So really, that is most of the CPU. Other than that, you have the accumulator right there. The one other register, the data register, is... I think that's this right there. And other than that, everything is just bussing to, well, the various outputs in the clock. It's really a simple, straightforward design. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that despite how awesome and buzzworthy this CPU might seem, it is, in fact, a piece of crap. That actually might be stretching the truth a little bit, but you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Let's look at some example programs for this. Now, I can't actually physically execute them because this is just a CPU. I don't have the instruction memory or the instructions written out, or basically this isn't a complete computer yet. It's just the most important part of a computer. So this is an example of what a program might look like written in sort of pseudo-assembly for this computer. And as you can see, for the Fibonacci sequence at least, this isn't that bad. It's seven cycles, which at seven ticks per cycle is 49 ticks for two digits of the Fibonacci sequence, meaning 24 and a half ticks for every digit. That's actually a not a bad speed for computing the Fibonacci series. Something you'll notice, though, is that half of the instructions in this program are loads and stores. Just keep that in mind. The second program I have written out here is for the infamous derp Vider algorithm that I think you remember oh so well if you've watched some of my other videos. One particular video in particular. And it looks a little something like this. So this is again 7 ticks per cycle, which 
49 ticks per duration. Again, not horrible. I mean, it's not going to exactly blaze through the division, but this was never a speedy division algorithm to begin with. But again, you'll notice half the instructions here are loads and stores. You starting to see what the problem might be here? Now let's look at a software multiplication algorithm. This looks a little bit something like this. It's a little bit longer than the others. And this equates to 126 ticks per bit, or 1,008 ticks to do a complete 8-bit multiplication. That is not good at all. So that's really the downfall of the CPU. It is reasonably fast, but because of its size, because it's so compact, I had to skimp on some of the architecture that can avoid doing too many loads and stores. So, as a result, they show up all the time in programs, and they really, really bog down the speed of it a lot. So, yeah, that is the problem with the CPU. It's fast, but the architecture doesn't, it just, it doesn't allow you to avoid loads and stores. But what if you did design an architecture that allowed you to avoid loads and stores? What if you could make a CPU that was similar in size, similar in speed, and still didn't have all a load or a store every other instruction? Well, a Fibonacci sequence program would look a little something like this. You still have to store here, but this is still two cycles for every di every bit, and now there are six cycle accumulator AOU register combos here. So, at six cycles per or six ticks per cycle, this would be twelve cycles per digit of the Fibonacci sequence. Twice as fast as this CPU right here. What if you did the jerk divider algorithm? Again, all of the all of the uh, stores and loads are suddenly gone, just like that. This averages four cycles per iteration, so 24 ticks per cycle. That again, twice as fast as this CPU right here. And finally, software multiplication the one which was really hit the hardest. Notice significantly smaller program. Very, very tiny program. 30 ticks per bit, meaning 210 ticks for a complete software multiplication. Now software multiplication's never going to be fast, but my word, that's five times as fast as a CPU just from rearranging the architecture a little bit. That is really, really impressive in my opinion. And special thanks to Imbizone for showing me some of the tricks to avoid loads and stores on the, this style of CPU, and writing out this lovely multiplication program you see right here. So you might be wondering, wow, that's amazing. How? What are these tricks? How could you possibly build a CPU that, well, it has all the advantages of this accumulator CPU, but also can run really, really fast by avoiding unnecessary loads and stores. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to officially announce that I have another Minecraft computer series in the works. This is not the advanced redstone computer tutorial series. This is something better, because unlike that series, this one has no identity crisis. It's not half concept, half theory, and half build. No. This series is going to be much more like my original building a Minecraft computer tutorial series, except basically better. It's going to have better hardware, hopefully better explanations, and at the end of it, we're going to have a better computer to play around with. In fact, things keep going as they look 
right now, the final computer is probably going to be pretty similar to the 6502 that was used in the original Nintendo Entertainment System. So uh, I think that's kind of cool. And in fact, it should be small and fast enough to run non-trivial programs on it. So you can actually do some interesting things with this, if all goes according to plan. Which I think I'm looking forward to. It. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Basically, the bottom line from all this is this is going to be what the computer build from the Advanced Redstone computer series should have been to begin with. And I, I can't wait to start putting this together and showing you guys. Which might make you wonder, alright, where is this series? When is this coming out? When am I going to start seeing videos on this? Trick question, viewers. You already have the Carry Cancel Adder tutorial I put out a few days ago. That's going to be video two of this new series, because the whole computer, the ALU, is going to be based on that very adder design that I uploaded on. The multiplication tutorial series I just made, the mini series, that is going to be one of the I.O. devices that we attach to the computer near the end of the series, so we can have really fast multiplication. And that hex memory I showed off, that's going to be the basic memory cell for the RAM in this computer. So you have already been seeing a few videos from this computer series, and hopefully you've been pleased with what you've seen so far. The series, I guess, should officially begin in the next few days. I'm going to start putting together the official intro video that leads into the build, and so forth and so on. So, yeah, I'm excited, I hope you're excited, and pretty soon we're going to start having a really awesome time building a kick-ass redstone computer. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and until next time viewers, see you then.